Hey guys, uh, so <clears throat> the next section which we are going to tackle here is the uh, policy plane part of it, right? Just to recap what we have done till now, we have uh, designed the underlay which is nothing but the ISIS protocol and on top of that we um, went and put in an overlay, right, which was uh, made up made out of Lisp and uh, VXLAN. Uh, we talked about how you can do the macro segmentation. We created those cool uh, virtual networks, right? We created sales and IT. These are the two subnets for that. And uh, we also created an infra VN or uh, infra VLAN or whatever you want to call it as. We created this guy in the global routing table itself. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's generally a VLAN which is reserved for connecting your, I don't know, maybe access points, cameras and all those infrastructure devices, right? So that is done. Then we also verified the intra VN communication, which means you know um, uh, your uh, IT IT uh, clients were able to talk to each other as well as the sales clients were able to talk to each other. Uh, we also then finally verified the mobility part as well, where we moved one of the client right from behind one switch to another switch, and we saw how the whole Lisp uh, fabric kind of self healed or self learned that uh, you know the host has moved and you saw how the connectivity was working in that case as well right now the next uh, quick section is this is going to be a very quick section honestly right so it's going to be about the policy plane all right so uh, we are talking about uh, policy plane so what we'll do first is <clears throat> uh, so the use case here like i've mentioned here right the use case here is um, the IT host 1 and IT host 3, right? Right now they have full connectivity. What I mean by that is if I go to my IT host 1, let's go to this guy, right? And uh, sorry, give me a second. All right, so if I go down, let's try that again. This is my IT host 1. Okay, I think it's back, yeah. So if I do a ping to uh, 172.16, 10.11 so this is my host 3 right this should work let's try ssh right ssh and i have configured ssh on host 3 so ideally this should work as well let's try that takes a few seconds all right let's wait for that we should get a password prompt i believe yeah there you go right so right now i'm inside host 3 Right, if I do who, you know, it's going to tell me that, you know, uh, this is the user. So I have connected to it. All right. So um, I just wanted to show you this before we put in any kind of HTTP rules. Right. So right now we have um, connectivity between host one and host three and we have, uh, we can do both ping and we can also do SSH. Right. So now what we are going to do is right again, uh, going back to my earlier discussion, we don't have an ICE in place here. Right. We don't. We have not configured authentication we have not configured ice so in order to test this uh, policy plane we are going to do it manually which means we are going to give the sgt we are going to assign the sgt manually to the interface normally the assigning of sgt would have happened via ice you know when when it gets authenticated via dot one x or map and sgt is assigned by ice right but in our case we are going to manually assign it since we don't have ice and then we will also configure the uh, SGACL, right? The TrustSec ACL, which again, uh, in your traditional ST access, you know, the ICE would have pushed those uh, uh, SGACLs as well, right? Now, in our case, we are gonna uh, uh, scalable group ACLs, right? Uh, in our case, we are gonna manually configure it, right? Cool. So let's start with that. Uh, first thing, let's um, create those uh, SGT and we let's assign that to our interface. So this is edge one right uh, uh, edge one and edge two this is where we have to do it so let's go to edge one over here right so let me grab that yeah so let's go to edge one and we are anyway trying it only for uh, let me just disconnect and connect again sometimes my consoles get stuck yeah there you go so what we are going to do is uh, we will um, go to show run or give me one second all right so um, you see this particular interface vdi 10 right now this is the interface on my edge one uh, where the traffic from all the it uh, clients are going to be coming in right uh, we have done this all all of this in the previous videos you can go back and check right what we have done is we have um, uh, we have uh, we have actually we tag the traffic here on the switch one 
we tag it with the VLAN 10, right? And then it goes up the trunk link. And uh, once it comes to the edge, we have created bridge domain interfaces. So in BDI 10, we get the IT traffic, BDI 20, we get the sales traffic, BDI 30, we get the AP traffic, right? So now we are interested in the IT traffic, right? So we are going to get into that. So this is the interface. So what we'll do is let's go to that interface, right? So once we're inter inside the interface, let's give a manual tag, right? Let's call CTS, sorry, it's CTS, role based, right? Uh, SGT map. And let's give a random tag let's say 10 right let's give the tag of 10 for uh, is there something else okay my bad so it's SGT and 10 yeah so we have now given the tag 10 for all the traffic which enters the BDI 10 right and uh, we'll also have we can also enable role enforcement though we will not be doing any enforcement on this device we will obviously be doing it on the destination device in our case we'll do it on the edge 2 but you know you can enable role based enforcement as well right so this is it this is uh, that's it i mean you just need to enable that maybe let's do explicit no shut if it is shut by any chance let's check if it is good show ip interface brief yeah this interface is good now let's do the same thing on the edge 2 here you go right so on edge 2 right uh, let's check the interface again right that's the interface let's get into it sorry yeah let's get into it let's go to bdi 10 and here uh, we are going to do the same thing cts role based uh, sgt map right then we'll do sgt and uh, we have to give let's give 20 okay then you do cts role based uh, enforcement okay so we have enabled uh, cts uh, uh, you know, SGT map, uh, 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 we are basically given the SGT of 20 for this particular interface, that is all the, uh, all the traffic which is coming um, in for uh, IT host 3, right, it's going to be tagged with SGT of uh, 20. So just to uh, give you a summary here, right, SGT is, that's why we call it as micro segmentation. Macro segmentation was achieved by using VRFs, right, um, uh, what I mean by that is, the IT host will not be able to talk to the sales host, right? Because they are in two different VRFs, unless we do some route leaking and stuff, which we will in the future videos. But uh, for as of now, they are not able to talk to each other because they are in two separate VRFs, uh, the IT host and the sales host. But what if you want to enforce some kind of a, uh, you know, you want to enforce some kind of a access rule within the same VRF, right? Within the IT VRF, you want to enforce some kind of access. So that's how, and that's accomplished using SGT. That's why we call it as micro segmentation. So I have tagged my traffic coming from host 1 to 10, and I'm going to tag the traffic coming from host 3 to 20. So that's done. And uh, the CTS role based enforcement is because if there is some kind of an SGACL, it will get enforced on this interface, right? So how do you define that SGACL? Again, uh, all of this step is definitely not needed if you are, uh, you know, doing it uh, uh, via, you know, DNAC and SD access because ICE will do all of this for you. It is going to push these things. But in our case, since we are doing it manually, let's come back. So first we'll have to create a role based ACL. So how do you do that? IP access list, role based. What do we want to call this? I'm going to say this allow ICMP deny SSH, right? Because that's what I want. I want to allow SN IC uh, ping, but I want to deny SSH. And uh, the trustsec basically follows what we call as a whitelist model, right? It's not blacklist. So it's like you know whitelist. In whitelist, what you want to deny, you have to deny explicitly because the rest of the stuff is going to be allowed. So in, in my case, I want to deny SSH. So let's put in a uh, access control entry over here, right? So deny. What is your SSH port? Port is uh, 22. So sorry, deny TCP. Um, I forgot the this thing, the uh, destination. Right? What is a destination port? EQ 22. There you go. So that's the only one entry needed. 10 deny uh, TCP destination EQ 22. So that's your role based uh, access list. Okay. The rest of the stuff is anyway going to be permitted because it is a uh, whitelist model 
now what we do is uh, let's go back and enforce this so we created an role based access list but we have to enforce it how do you do that you say cts or let me just clear the screen a little bit right so this is what we have so we'll say cts role based uh, permissions right this is a global command and we have to give the sgts right we have to say from so we want to control the traffic going going from sgt 10 to 20 so we're going to say 10 is the source sgt tag uh, where is it going towards it's to um, to what to um, sgt of uh, 20 traffic going from 10 to 20 and this is where you know we have to uh, sorry this is where we have to mention that access list which we just now created which was that this one so let's grab that let's put it here awesome guys that's it we are done right just to recap what we did was we tagged the traffic uh, you know coming from it host 1 with 10 it host 3 is uh, 20 and uh, we have defined uh, sgacl on uh, you know on the h2 saying that you know from 10 to 20 just allow ping but don't allow ssh now let's verify so let's go to the same host here right so let's try ping first there you go ping works but now let's try the ssh earlier it was working but now it should not right so let's wait for a few seconds if it works then it should actually give us this uh, password prompt like it gave before right so let's wait for that it should time out and uh, you know it should basically tell not allow us to do ssh uh, from the box so there you go it's it's already i think by now it should have see there you go okay not yet we got some kind of a log but that's fine I think by now, which ah, there you go, right? It timed out completely. You can see now that I've got the prompt back. So that's mainly what I wanted to show here, right? Uh, before we uh, end this uh, policy section, I want to quickly uh, show you a um, uh, capture as well to show where the SGT is carried, right? So I have enabled uh, the capture over here um, on which interface? On my gigabit one interface, right? On my H2. So now when I do a ping uh, from, you know, say IT host 1 to IT host 3, I'll show you where the SGT is carried. The SGT is 10, right? So 172.16.10.11. Is that it? Yeah. So now let's see here. Let's pick one of the packet. You see, uh, let's go inside the VXLAN, right? There you go, right? In the group policy ID. So you can see the ID, uh, which is the SGT 10 is carried. Now, uh, SGT 10 is uh, getting tagged at the source end, at the destination end, which is the H2, right? The, obviously, we have defined uh, uh, <coughs> the, the destination to, to have the SGT of uh, 20, right? So, as a result, the CTS role-based, um, you know, access policy is getting uh, activated. And since we have denied uh, SSH, that is why SSH was not working, whereas, you know, SM, um, ICMP works, right? So that's that's mainly around the policy side of it. Um, so we will uh, um, take a break here and come back to the next section, which is going to be about uh, the fusion router and how you can basically get your clients uh, to talk to the outside world or probably talk to a data center, right? Like an enterprise data center, or even we'll also look into inter VN communication where you know the sales VRF will be able to talk to the IT VRF, right? Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.